Not only is natural immunity relatively easy to gain, but studies repeatedly show it is just as efficacious, just as reliable as vaccine-derived immunity without, however, and this is very important, the potential dangers that a fast-tracked experimental vaccine carry with it. We see in this study where they concluded that individuals who have had SARS-CoV-2 infection are unlikely to benefit from COVID-19 vaccination. We see this in the NIH where they state that the immune systems of more than 95% of the people who recovered naturally from COVID-19, they had durable memories of the virus up to at least eight months after infection. And they state that the results provide hope that people receiving the vaccines will develop similar lasting immune memory. We see in a study from Israel where they state that the BNT162B2 vaccine and natural infection had very similar immune responses. This puts into question the need to vaccinate previously infected individuals. Likewise, the study in Austria where they conclude that protection against SARS-CoV-2 after natural infection is common comparable with the highest available estimates on vaccine efficacies. We see this study in Qatar and they state that natural infection appears to elicit strong protection against reinfection with an efficacy of around 95% for at least 7 months. Then there's this massive study that was done in Denmark where they found that of the more than 11,000 infected cases, only 72 did not gain immunity, which is less than 1%. This has led that the World Health Organization to conclude that recent evidence suggests that natural infection may provide similar protection protection against symptomatic disease as vaccination. And then this more recent publication from the WHO that helps put my point into perspective, they admit that natural immunity confers high levels of protection, around 81% to close to 100% protection in people younger than 65 years old or among healthcare workers. Whilst vaccines on the other hand have reported an effectiveness ranging from around 64% to just over 97%. So now we have more doctors and scientists coming forward and speaking out. We've seen this op-ed from Dr. Jeffrey Klausner and Noe Kojima where they state that moving forward policymakers should include natural immunity or the documentation of prior infection as evidence of immunity equal to that of vaccination. And then there was this crazy scenario over here with Professor Martin Kuldorf on Twitter and this guy is one of the most highly cited scientists scientists alive, he was asked, does everyone really need to get a vaccine? To which he explained, no, those with prior natural infection do not need to, nor do children. And Twitter mind-blowingly went ahead and they censored this dude. Correspondingly, we see this article over here with a seasoned doctor, Gregory Pinto, and he argued that there is no indication that immunity derived from prior COVID infection is in any way inferior to that derived from vaccination. Taking it a step further was Dr. Rose Birkin. She argues that several studies have found that natural immunity provides protection that is, and I quote, similar to and possibly even stronger than that of vaccination. Now, of course, as this new research begins to emerge in the establishment media and authorities start fear mongering about the terrifying way coronavirus variants evade antibodies. And we constantly see that line, evading antibodies, evading antibodies. But what they are very conveniently not mentioning to us guys, which is extremely deceptive, is that these variants are unlikely evading our white blood T cells, which are absolutely instrumental in how the immune system itself works. We see in this study over here, for example, which was done exclusively on people who had gained natural immunity, they found that virtually all anti-SARS-CoV-2 T-cell responses should recognize these newly described variants. In this study, the results demonstrate that T-cell responses in convalescent, which is to say naturally recovered COVID subjects, and those who received the vaccine are not substantially affected by mutations found in the SARS-CoV-2 variants. And then this study over here where they very conveniently mention in the headlines how the vaccines are priming T-cells to fight the new variants whilst quietly mentioning in the summary that natural immunity does the exact same thing. Now what makes these findings all the more promising guys is multiple studies dating back an entire year now. They show that a very large percent of the population who have never been infected with COVID-19 nor have they been vaccinated. This demographic already have these T-cells. We see in this study over here, for example, that around 40 to 60% of unexposed individuals had these T-cells, which they believe they had acquired through the encounters of previous common cold coronaviruses in the past. Then we see this study over here where they state, our findings suggest that SARS-CoV-2 reactive T-cells are likely to be present in many individuals already because of prior exposure to flu and CMV viruses. We see this article summarizing a very recent study from July of 2021 
one from Stanford University, where they explain that those experiencing more milder symptoms, it's because their T cells, and I quote, remember previous encounters with seasonal coronaviruses. Now this of course is something as my supporters and followers know that I've been trying to point out throughout this entire so-called pandemic. The overwhelming majority of cases guys are in mild condition. We see from the statistical authority worldometer over here for example, which is trusted by governments worldwide for their analysis, of the currently more than 11 million active cases, 99.3% are in mild condition guys. We see in March of this year, of the more than 21 million active cases, 99.6% are in mild condition. We see in December of last year, of the more than 21 million active infected cases, 99.5% were in mild condition. And then dating all the way back an entire year to June of 2020, we see of the more than 3.8 million active cases at the time, 99% were in mild condition. And what this all suggests when we look at the actual statistics is that the overwhelming majority of society seem to have had some pre-existing T-cell immunity this whole entire time. And that if we had simply focused on protecting that very small minority of vulnerable people, whilst allowing the much larger overwhelming majority to get infected with some mild flu-like symptoms, which then results in natural, reliable immunity comparable to vaccination, then not only would we probably have built herd immunity by now and not be dealing with these mutations, but then we could have probably avoided what is projected to be 8% of the entire world's population being pushed into poverty. That's around half a billion people, guys. We could have avoided an additional 130 million people that are starving to death. We could have avoided these deaths of despair. We could have avoided making countless people needlessly suffer. And we could have avoided what will undoubtedly be the worst man-made, man-made disaster in human history. Now we already know you won't hear anything about this kind of important analysis in the establishment media or from the establishment authorities who have been unambiguously biased throughout this entire debacle. But all of the studies, all of the evidence to back up my claims I have provided to you. So please guys, share this with your family and share this with your friends. We are no longer living in the dark ages where the ruling class have a monopoly on information. No, this is the age of communication and the age of the internet. And we need to hold them accountable for the unprecedented division and destruction that they have caused.